Container Tip Tuesday. And today we have a topic by request, and that is we are defending against that fast and furious knife attack up close when you can't go into power shot mode. And specifically one application that we use, but what is the empty hand translation of that for times when you don't have the cane? And that is right in line with a lot of you, which we're infinitely appreciative of. You replied to the survey, the content survey, as to what you would like to see more of. And one was you wanted to see the empty hand translations ACSD is known for from day one. But before we do that, a warm welcome to those of you that are here for the first time as well as the loyal crew. If you're here for the first time, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you don't miss any future content. And take advantage of the free resource that is the Kane Clarity Call by texting CCC to 305-745-7839 so we can have a conversation, see where you are right now, and discuss everything regarding where, where to get started, how to get started. I don't have a, uh, an instructor. Nobody offers this in my place, so how, how can I possibly do that? Oh, and by the way, what cane should I get? Before you go to the website and you start you know, investing in things and get it right from the onset, that's what that call is all about. So uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, we demonstrated what happens with a knife attack. And a little bit of a background here, the ACSD system, when I put this together, um, I had reviewed over 200 of these knife attacks and you've heard me say it before, I hate it. it, it to me, it is the worst kind because again, if you have a, a knife, if you have an anatomical knife, if you have, yeah, um, hide that there real quick. It, the attacks happen like this, they're fast, they're furious, go ahead. Uh, right, so it's not, they don't happen. Uh, and I'm not mocking it, guys. Why? He flips it. We're not doing a, a demo, a martial arts demo or demonstrating potential there. Uh, really, they come in, uh, you turn around, and the next thing you know is he, here he goes, right? He can hide it. Any street punk can avail themselves in a, a, a very inexpensive. You don't need a concealed uh, a weapons permit to purchase a knife and so, so on and so forth. And one of the uh, applications that we looked at was the whole idea of if I'm here up close and I cannot go into this power shot mode, I'm, I'm, I'm here, right? So imagine I don't know, you're in an ATM or whatever, he doesn't even put, and the next thing you know, see that arm came in there first and my cane was down here, and so now I have to start defending against something that's fast and furious. If you have your cane and you can at least go from here to here, you see it up to here. Right? And I'm going to give the, the, the first situation is you're going to use something called an arrow. We call it an ACSD, um, this portion of the forearm, right? So we don't want to be getting sliced in any uh, vital area. So if I come out here and I couldn't and I can do this at, at, at first, right? It'd be great if I can do this, but I have to be mindful of this here. And so the name that we use for this is a radial stunner. Notice that by design, I call it radial because what we're looking to target is the radial, the thumb side. We want that radial bone, which there's a radial nerve right in there, right? Which that's what we're looking to hit when you're doing that. So it's not just that I'm defending this way. It's also that I'm aggressive with it because I want to do damage. Now, remember what I always tell you, if I take out the limb, I win, right? So that would be the idea, and, and we're doing this padded. I'm gonna go ahead and switch here because that Raven King, that's, that's a metal pipe basically, right? And so uh, now you're using a padded drone. He's padded as well. Tilt that down a little bit because I want you to see what I do with my head. So it's not enough to do this because he can actually extend and get through. When I hit, there's this movement where I'm moving back, right? And you may have to do this several times because he's coming fast. Every single time you're hitting, you're looking to do, do it here. Notice that Kiko's coming this way where the padding is because it's not fun even with a drone to continue to get hit here. Hopefully he drops it, right? Now there's another component. How long are we gonna do this for? Can we just, should we just go to the head? My issue with that is 
that if you're doing this, see that split second, I don't like it. And so think of a steering wheel. If you take your cane here and I tell you, show me how you drive with a steering wheel, you understand this concept. And so it would be to the inside, the inside which would force them to come back. But not only that, it gives you an opportunity to move on above, above the elbow. I'm gonna do it in real time, so just bear with me. I'm gonna do it in real time and you'll understand why I prefer this strategy. Back off, back off, back off! Right, so he goes down and if you can tilt, we can do that again. And, and, and you can see this here. When I move, I'm taking out the shin or coming back. Now, guys, if you have, you can, you know, if you feel that it's a headshot you wanna to go to, hey, he's coming with a knife. But understand this, whether you go here or you went here, or you went to the top, now you're back in power shot range mode, right? So now it's back off, back off, back off, or, or if you're coming up here, right, back off, and now you get to move forward and also create that distance, which is your best friend when you're dealing with a knife attack. The question specifically for this, I wanted to review this, is, Joe, ACSD, show me the empty hand skill set. That is not new. From day number one, you go back to the classical collection, ACSD from day one has the empty hand translation of what you're doing with that cane. It's a horrible situation because if this fellow knows what he's doing with that knife, you're gonna get cut. And, and I wish that weren't the case, right? But we want, there's, there's cuts and then there's cuts. We're trying to limit, limit uh, vital cuts. So again, if I'm dealing with this, there's three possibilities. You saw me at one point do an arrow to move on to here. An arrow's just a way of connecting. You're deflecting to connect to control. Deflecting to connect to control, so we can't just leave it here, or we can't just leave it here. There's going to have to be some type of follow-up. That is also the case if you're doing an X to move out of here. This requires follow-up. My personal preference is a W in this case, and that's what's going to, you're gonna go from this pressing down movement it's very similar if you're here, okay? And guess what I'm looking for? I'm still looking for that radial nerve. I'm still looking for that kick over and over. And guys, we do that here. We have our 10 second um, a survival drill. And if he doesn't penetrate and I continue with that palm heel to hit there, it starts getting uncomfortable after a while. Now, why would I continue hitting? Because I haven't been able to put, get a grip on there, right? So the idea would be that if I do this, he pulls back. So let's do a couple and I'll grab some. So he, he moved. Oh, but now I was able to. His natural reaction is not to continue going forward. He's going to go ahead and pull back. That's important that you understand that because what you're going to do, the shutdown mechanism, when you're with an empty hand, is going to be anchoring. You're going to anchor, and, the, and you're always anchoring relative to anatomical position, it's above the elbow. It's never below. This would be below. So if I go to anchor here, oh, that's not, he starts pulling, he starts pulling, he starts pulling, he starts pulling, he eventually gets out of that. So if I move in here and I'm able to hang on with my grip, now he's gonna pull. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead with that. That's my reverse anchor, you okay? Yeah. This locks the wrist, the tap when you feel that, and there's your extraction and we teach it. All right, so you're gonna clear the weapon first, Right, you're gonna clear it away from your midline and you're going to go ahead and anchor before you can extract, right? You, you, you wanna get a good anchor. If you move in here and you do get the opportunity, he pulls and now when he pulls, he can't pull back anymore, he's gonna take a step back to do it again. Oh, that would be outstanding. That would be my other way to anchor. Notice it's always above the elbow. We want his head lower than his waist, which throws off the biomechanics. There's the pressure, there's the extraction. Listen. Try punching, bring your, your head below your waist and try punching there. It just throws off the biomechanics uh, altogether. One bonus that I wanna give you. Some of you are looking and say, Joe, I don't have that grip strength. Well, let's do something about that. Let's do something about that. Let me show you real quick. Let me have two equalizers here. Um, or one, let me just have one, just one equalizer. And what I'm gonna ask Kiko, we're gonna tilt down here. And guys, you, you can do this with a pull-up bar. How are we going to improve your cane training, your figure eight, just the fact that you're doing that for what you do to one side, you're doing to the other, is going to strengthen your wrist. It's going to strengthen your grip. So does strength training, so does when you're weight lifting, or guys that come in here that weight train, boy, when they get that grip on you, 
you really feel it. Very difficult to break off of there. But hanging from an overhead bar, so if I go up there, you have a chin-up bar or something that's sturdy enough that these days you can put it in the door frame and hold you and hang on working your way up to one minute, two minutes of holding on in there, right, especially if it's thick. This is called an equalizer, right? It's, it's the design. Go ahead and, and tilt down. Kiko, I'm going to ask you to just go under there. And so it's very uh, portable. Go ahead and pull yourself up a uh, 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 standard grip, standard grip. And what I want you to do is pull, just bring your shoulders off the mat. Yeah, no, no, and just hang there so, so that you're hanging off. And so he's hanging off of there, and he's having to use his grip. you got to breathe, right? Okay, thank you. So you're going to work your way up to hanging on there, hanging, literally hanging, with your low back, your shoulders, your back off of there. Work your way up to one minute, work your way up to two minutes. You have to keep breathing, right? Especially those of you, if there's any issue with blood pressure or anything like that, of course, I preface the whole thing by saying that this is an exercise and you always gotta get medical clearance if that's the case. So I'm not making any medical claims here. That's my disclaimer. But that's one way of strengthening and making for a better grip, okay? For that type of um, a W in, in the defense. So guys, how, where do you get started? Because you're seeing this, you're seeing potential. You've heard me say in the past that piecing together YouTube video, you don't want to be that YouTube cane or, um, you know, yesterday's technology is, is DVDs and uh, how do we know that you're doing things correctly and, and consistently if we can't see you? So let's have a conversation about this. Um, go ahead and text that CCC to 305-745-7839 and uh, the staff will schedule you in less than 24 hours and we will bring clarity to all topics related to cane self-defense and training. As always, thank you for watching. Keep caning. Stay safe.